do 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 Oh, barrel. Oh, where'd it go? That happened real fast, so let me replay that for you. Whoa, there it goes. Let's try a pistol on this one. Holy crap! In case you're wondering how I did that, the source code for Doom 3 is now freely available online. I'm working with the OS X version, but the Windows version is available too. It took just a few hours of browsing the code base to become familiar with it, and then just one line of code each to implement a few fun little hacks. This despite the fact that I don't really know C++. If I can do it, believe me, you can too. For example, here's the code that applies that huge force to the barrels and other physics objects in the game. I just take the physics impulse, which is a force applied to an object, and multiply it times nearly a hundred. The old line of code is above the new line below. This takes place in the apply impulse method, which affects every physics force in the game, of the id entity class, which represents every object in the game. And the result is that every tiny push on an object in the game has a huge effect. Here's a snippet I got from iddevnet.com, I'll have a link in the show notes, which is going to be a little more helpful to developers. It also modifies the id entity class, which represents objects, and it sits in the spawn method, which is called the create them. Anytime an object like a bullet or a monster is spawned, it prints a message out with the class name of the object to the in-game console. You display the console with the tilde key during a game, and if we fire a bullet and redisplay the console, you see the hello message for the bullet that was created, as well as the brass that was ejected from the pistol. Likewise, if we spawn a light using the in-game spawn command, you can see that that appears as a debug message as well. One more fun trick before I wrap this up. This one affects the id AI class that controls enemy movement, etc. It alters the setEnemy method, which gets called whenever an AI decides to attack a new entity, including the player. The original line of code, which I've commented out, sets up to operate on the enemy that was passed in, that is, the player. And here's my altered line of code. It seems every entity, including the player, has a list of enemies that it's currently targeting. So, instead of having the enemy attack the player, I have the enemy attack the player's first enemy. So we're going to walk up to a zombie here, and you see it takes no interest in the player. Instead, it goes and targets the player's first enemy, which is another zombie. And then, if a zombie runs out of other enemies, it turns and attacks itself. That's about all I have for today. I'll include links to the Windows and OS X source code in the video description. I'll also include a few references so you can read up on how the source code is structured and start your own hacks. Thanks for watching!